All right, moving on, making good progress here in the course. We're still in level one, of course, and we're in the conduction defects unit, and so we're going to talk about accessory pathways now. We've hit this several times in previous lessons, but I wanted to focus for just a few minutes on this topic alone, and it deserves its own lesson. Again, for the 83rd time, the atria and the ventricles are supposed to be insulated electrically. The fibrous tissue that supports the valves between the atria and the ventricles is supposed to be a full insulation so that impulses cannot jump from the atria directly to the ventricles. They have to go through the AV node. We want the AV node to be in place. It's a key part of the conduction system. It is there to slow that impulse, allow the atrial kick to stretch the ventricles, and it's there as a protection for the ventricles when the atria are fibrillating. The atrial chaos doesn't become ventricular chaos. Ventricles don't deal with fib very well. And so the accessory pathway then is a bundle of connecting fibers that grew in or you were born with um, that short circuit that runs between the atria and the ventricles across that insulating boundary and lets the impulse jump from the atria to the ventricles without going through the AV node. Here it is schematically in two or three different views. Um, a trivia question for you would be what is that accessory pathway called? The bundle of what? It's the bundle of Kent. So we have Bachmann's bundle and we have the bundle of Kent. Um, and it's shown here in a particular location on the right side of the heart. In, in a couple of the diagrams, shown on the left side of the heart in another of the diagrams, it can be anywhere where it jumps across the atria to the ventricles. It doesn't have to be in one particular spot, wherever it's at. We call it the bundle of Kent. Mrs. Smith doesn't care that you know that, but the National Registry probably does. And so that bundle of connecting fibers allows that impulse to jump across, bypass the whole AV node system, and then the impulse has hit the right ventricle. Like, look at the picture in the top left. The impulse jumped from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Now the right ventricle is being depolarized, and the left ventricle gets depolarized from the right ventricle or from another impulse that makes it down the regular pathway. And so you end up with a wide QRS, and you end up with the ventricles depolarizing at different times, giving you that wide QRS. And that is, um, the PRI is shortened because the impulse jumps across. Remember, the PRI is supposed to be when the impulse is slowing through the AV node and the AV junction and the bundle and the branches, and it's supposed to be taking up some time there. But if that never gets to happen, the impulse just jumps straight across, then you're not going to have much PRI. So you have that slurred upstroke, that delta wave, and that's pretty much um, classic for an accessory pathway. Now, there are others besides Wolf, Parkinson, White, WPW. There are other uh, diseases that are of accessory bypass tracts, but WPW is the most common. But how common is it? Well, not very common. 0.2% of the population. So two out of a thousand uh, people may have this. Now, I know a couple people and so, you know, to me, it's not that uncommon. It's something we should all know about it. But uh, it will give you, again, that short PRI because of the delta wave, that wide QRS because of the delta wave. Um, and the delta waves are going to be visible in some leads and not others. So you, when you get that 12 lead, look everywhere for that delta wave. Another reason that we instituted the M in our RPM ABC scheme for uh, EKG analysis was to try to catch this because I'm fairly confident I've missed it before, before I started using RPM. But if I will do RPM, then I will catch that wide QRS. I will catch that short PRI. Whereas my eye may not be catching the delta wave, um, if, if I will be disciplined enough to use the M, you know, when I get to the M, the measurement on the PRI and the QRS will tip me off. Short PRI, long QRS, Look for a delta wave, suspect an accessory bypass track. So here's some more um, pictures, more of, of the same sort of information. When you get the PDF of the slides that goes along with this course in Moodle, 
Uh, that video link up there will be live and you should be able to go to that if you want to. Um, and so this is a fairly straightforward concept I think once you understand it. WPW is kind of mysterious uh, to a lot of working medics because they heard about it back in their in their paramedic class in, in previous years but really you know with the lack of con ed that's out there um, you really don't hear it again and then maybe you wonder if you're missing this. Uh, RPM will help you to not miss this <clears throat> but I'm going to show you here in a minute the most scary rhythm to me um, that's out there and it involves WPW and so I just really want to make sure that we cover this in, in pretty good detail. Um, here you can see um, some of the slurred, the delta waves and um, you know in a, in a fairly classic WPW sort of, sort of strip. Uh, ECG in motion would be real good for you to look at this. They have, uh, there's a couple of very good examples on there and um, so again try to if you don't purchase ECG in motion at least let's make sure you see it in class until you're until you're happy what about treatment well you know we don't do a lot of talking about treatment here in this level one course we do a lot of that in our scenario based uh, simulation cases in the in the regular face-to-face -face course but uh, let's talk about it real briefly because WPW concerns me I'm worried about it but I'm not worried about it because I may find it with SVT. If I see it with sinus tac or SVT, my usual treatments will be just fine. And those treatments and these you know, medications you don't know yet, um, but anything that we normally would do for an SVT, we can also do for SVT with a WPW bypass track and we'll be fine. The rapid AFib with WPW, that's a different deal. That's a pretty scary one. <clears throat> so here's the thing. It's wide, it's irregular, and it's fast. So a wide irregular tachycardia, wide complex irregular tachycardia to use ACLS terminology, that is polymorphic. There is more than one shape of the complex and you have periods of extremely fast rates in the 300 range and you have a wide and irregular tachycardia, we don't do any medication there. We don't block that AV node. Because here's the deal. If you give medications that shut down the AV node, then the bypass track is the only thing still working. Now all the impulses are going to jump down that bypass track, and there's no protection for the ventricle. Because the atria are going crazy, they're fibbing in the 300 plus range, and atrial chaos then can become ventricular chaos if we take out the AV node completely. There is a medication called procainamide that's been out there for many, 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 many years. Um, us old people remember it. Not many of us ever used it. It used to be third line for ventricular fibrillation and behind lidocaine and bertillium. A lot of services have taken it off the trucks. So if you still have procainamide, Procainamide does block accessory pathways. It would be great for this situation. But if you don't have it, then your only option is to cardiovert, use electricity, if your patient becomes unstable enough that that's what you need to do. Here's some examples of WPW with atrial fib, and they are just flat scary. Um, it's, it's, you get a gasp from everybody when the 12 lead prints out. I would point out, though, that in lead 2, it doesn't always look that scary. The most scary views are in the chest leads. <clears throat> and so if you're not getting a 12 lead on your atrial fib, your wide, complex, irregular, polymorphic tachycardia patient, if you're not getting a 12 lead, you may not really catch this. And this is a very scary rhythm because the stuff you would normally do is not just worthless, it's dangerous. Again, SVT with WPW, no big deal. You can totally miss the WPW, never even see it, and just kind of wander through and you'll be okay. Uh, some folks talk about orthodromic and antidromic impulse circulation. That's cool. You sound really smart, but you're, it makes you an EKG geek. It's not just R-rated. I think it's X-rated. There is a way to tell. No one cares, um, at least no one that I know that works in the back of an ambulance cares, because you're going to see it and you're going to deal with it. It's SVT. 
It's regular, <clears throat> but wide. It's this one that's the big, big, big hairy deal, and the usual treatment can be deadly. Again, the things are it's wide, it's irregular, it's polymorphic, and there's periods of ridiculously fast rates. AFib with WPW is the scary one. No meds, electricity, if you need it, if your patient becomes unstable enough for electricity.